Hey, hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again. Let's take a look at what we got over the weekend. So, uh, we went, and a story too. This is a story. So, um, over the weekend, we were out and about. And so, we basically, uh, we were Saturday, we were thinking, hey, you know, let's grab by deep. We went out for breakfast. And we were trying to decide where to go. And so, she's like, hey, we haven't been to so and so restaurant in a while. Let's go there. And she said, and right next door to it is a record store, she said, which we haven't been to in a while, which is true. Like I said, there's like three, one, two, three key record stores in my general area, all within Virginia Beach. So three in the city. And they're all on opposite sides of the city. Literally, it's like a triangle. And so this is one, you know, so we hit them periodically. And we hadn't been to this one in, you know, I don't know, a month or two, at least two months probably. So she's like, let's go eat over there. We can swing by there because they open shortly after breakfast. So we did that. And so this is going to harken back to, um, I have one particular viewer that comments often on my videos and usually <laughs> makes comments on my Amazon buys about how buying online, you know, and I know the theory, I know the idea, I know the, 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 the positives to going local, but you know, buying online, you miss out on the encounter with other people. You miss out with, you know, communicating with other people, see, you know, it's, fellowship of going out and just being in public and so i get that i get that but the point i make usually is most of the records i buy like on amazon or whatever um tend to be records that my local stores don't sell it's not the type of stuff that they carry so it is hard i you know now i could go in there and make a special order it but you know and then the cost it's not always you know to make them do that or whatever so a lot of stuff I buy online is not the stuff that's carried in my stores. And so I do buy that kind of stuff online. But I do go to the stores and I do support local business, as I've shown numerous times. And here's a case. And here's a case that also proves his point right. Um, well, let me get that story first. So <laughs> I go in where it's a small store. I mean, it's a small store as far as just it's crammed full of records. There's records on the floor. There's records in here. There's I've never seen all the records in there because they're everywhere in every corner and every nook. They're everywhere, but it's a small store. So I go to the section where they put the new received you stuff. My wife goes to a section, which we still never figured out why this section is. It's outside of the alphabetical stuff. So she asked the owner who was there, why this section versus this section? And now we understand. Um... And so basically she went over there and we just focused on that. So while I'm over here focused on this, she's, blah, blah, blah. she's hey, how about this? And she'll pull out an album and oh, I shouldn't show that. Pull out an album. How about this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got that. Or no, I don't need that. Or no, I'm not interested. And so she's pulling out key bands like that. So while well, she eventually makes herself over here. So now in the very front of the store is a bunch of boxes for like rare stuff and some other oddities. And then there's a couple chairs. And sure enough, people, I mean, people come in there and sit. It, it is a place where they fellowship or hang out. In this case, there were two guys there, like drinking coffee and talking. And then, you know, the, and, then, and then the owner is, the counter is right there. So while he's there, it's like the three guys. They're just talking. Well, my wife eventually makes it over there and she's standing beside the guys in the chairs because she's looking through the rare collectible boxes. And the guy in the chair, who I admit, I'm like, yeah, he looks a little familiar. Um, he talks to my wife. He says, you know, you and your husband look familiar to me. I'm just wondering if we know each other. And she's like, well, I don't know. She said, my husband is in the record store all the time. He goes, okay, well, maybe that's, maybe that's what I've seen. So anyway, that was the first encounter. So then I eventually make it back to real close to where they are. I'm looking in a section over there and I hear him and his friend talking. And this guy says, he's to his friend, so the new Warren Haynes album comes out in, the early, in early November. So that sparked my attention. So I spoke up. I said, hey, did you go see Warren Haynes last week at the local club here in town, local venue here in town? And because I didn't go, and I really wanted to go, and and I didn't go. But Warren Haynes has a new solo album out coming out outside of Government Mule. It's a solo album, and I plan on getting it. Actually, I think I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered it already. And the uh, so he mentioned it, and I thought maybe he went. So one of the reasons I didn't go was because I didn't know anybody that was going to go, and I hate going alone. So anyway, he said, no, I didn't get a chance to because I had a gig that night. Ah, gig, Okay. I said, I didn't go, but I don't think I had a gig that night. I think 
I just didn't go. And he goes, oh, you play out. And I said, yes. He said, what's your band's name? I told him the band's name. He goes, oh, I know. And he mentions a guitar player and a singer. And I'm like, well, who's your band? And he tells me his band name, which is a guy's name. And I said, oh, that's you. He is the guy. And he's been to our shows before. And, I, you know, I don't know him personally. I may be Facebook friends with him, but I, I, he's been to our shows. I've met him, but not, it didn't link. He had a hat on and sunglasses. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's you. So there you go. And we, we got to talk to him about gigs and stuff. And his former singer that recently quit is a good friend of mine. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I've known her for years. And, you know, he told me the story behind that. So, yeah, an encounter. And we kept talking. And, sure, and I said, he said, no, I had to play it. And he mentioned the club during that concert. I'm like, that's funny. We're playing there tonight. And I said, and actually the last time we played there last month, I remember now, you came to our show. So he has been to our shows, and now I remember him. Anyway, sure enough, that night, he showed up at that club too. So anyway, we all had a, we all had a laugh. Anyway, get to the story of what I got, Jeff. They had a section, uh, while we're looking through the used stuff, we found some stuff, but what, they also had a section for the new Rocktober releases. I totally drew a blank on all the things I wanted, but they did have one, so I picked up the Twisted Sister Stay Hungry. Interesting story because, uh, who was it? Um, Brandon Hall of Fame, was he the one that said that that Twisted Sister reissue in like 20 whatever it was, the one that's purple and pinkish, was a horrible pressing? So I'm on the lookout for a new one. Now this is a new one. It's also in Rhino, probably the same label that one was. I don't know if it's going to be a better pressing. It has been remastered since that. Apparently it's been remastered in 2024. It's got some bonus tracks which were not on the original, um, which I think, if I have to go back and look, back in, uh, I don't know, 10, 15, 10, 12 years ago, Twisted Sister did Still Hungry, which is where they went in and re-recorded the entire Stay Hungry album, plus added some studio songs that were written around the same time that never got released, and put out a bunch of bonus tracks on that on the CD. And that has been on vinyl, and I didn't know that. It came out on vinyl years ago, and now it's like 500 bucks if you want to get a copy. Um, so when I saw this, my first thought was maybe this is still hungry, but I said, no, it's stay hungry. It's a double record set. It's got some bonus tracks. I think they came. I have to go back and look. I think they may be some of the tracks from the still hungry release. I, again, need to confirm that. But it's got some bonus tracks, and it's a double record set, and it's red. And I thought, well, I'm going to get it. And so then my thought, of course, was buy it local, buy it online. I had looked online last week, and it wasn't even online uh, at least not officially. It was on there, but somebody was selling it for like 50 something dollars. This was, you know, cheaper than that. So I said, yeah, I'm going to buy that again, support local business. And so I did. So I picked this up and it's cool. You know, it's, uh, it's like I say, it's got bonus tracks and stuff. So that was one. That's the only one they had in the set of Rocktober releases that I wanted. And then I realized later, cause I saw another store show a video of it. And I said, oh, the Iomi album, I definitely want that. I need to look at the full list. Cause I could have swore there was another one I wanted. So I'll look at that later. Anyway, so we're flipping through and my wife's like, how about Montrose? I'm like, yeah, actually, yes. Because she knows I like Montrose because she knows I like the Sammy Hagrobs. She was with me when I bought the Sammy Hagar album, uh, the, the first Montrose album a few months ago. So she's aware of that name. She says, how about this? I said, yes, you know, because I really recently did a digger, a bigger, deeper dig into understanding the Montrose years because I see a lot of Montrose out there. Um, and I realize now there's like five band Montrose albums. And of course, I have the first two with Sammy. So they don't have an extensive catalog. And then it's a lot of Mont Ronnie Montrose. And then he's got the Gamma stuff. And um, so I finally understood. I'm like, there's only like five Montrose albums. Four or five. Five. And so I'm like, yeah, I should pick them up. And this is one of them. This is one of the, I think, I don't want to guess. One of the last ones. I don't know. Um, but there are, you know, there's the one with the, the bikini crotch on the front. And, um, and, you know, they're good. You know, I just always gravitated towards the Sammy years because I'm a big Sammy fan. And so I listened to some of his stuff online. I'm like, oh, that's solid stuff. So, yeah, pick it up. And they had this, and I looked at it. I see a lot of Montrose, but I don't see a lot of it in great condition. So I pulled it out, and it was, like, great condition. So I thought, yeah. And, and they sell all their records for, you know, under $8, so it's not too, too bad. And um, so then she showed some other ones. I'm like, no, no, no. But then I went over there and was helping her because it's a big section. So we were alternating. And I found a couple that she probably wouldn't have pulled out because it's more obscure. Slade. Now, I have one, two, three Slade albums. Um, 
Slade is one of those bands that every time I find them in the wild, they are not in good shape at all. And this album, I've never found one that looked even like it was hardly playable. They always have so much ring wear. I don't know if it's the way it may. I've never found one that doesn't look like it's beat up on the cover. So I expected the same thing when I opened this, that inside was going to be comparable to everyone else I saw. But I was, lo and behold, surprised when I pulled it out and it was very shiny. Had a couple fingerprints. I pulled it out, polished it with the soft rag, and it's even more shiny now. So finally, I found some Slade that I think is going to be uh, sound a lot better than any of the ones I've seen. So that was good. And the same thing with this band. Sweet. Give us a wink. This is the one has got action on it and stuff like that. I see a lot of sweet out there, but it tends to be there in not great condition. That's not always the case, but it tends to be, at least for, for give us a wink, it always seems to be in rough condition. Again, this one cover and everything and album was in, you know, really good shiny condition. So I pounce on this. Um, I think I have... I don't have many. I have that record store day, like demo album that they've got, but I haven't got a lot of their actual albums. So I really do want to pick them up. And this one looked really good. Like I say, cover and inserts. So I grabbed that. And then we went to, a, now that was all at that local store. We went to a thrift store that same day, later that day, uh, a thrift store that is, you know, closer by that we hadn't been to in a while. And I found this. It's the only thing I found in there that was, of viable quality and I only remembered this because I recently bought a compilation on with the song but this is Austin Roberts turns out I didn't realize until I looked him up a few months ago when I bought one of those compilations that had this is called Rocky it has a song Rocky that's the most famous song probably his only famous song that I know of and I remember reading about it and it seems like he's from like right Basically, he's from the town I was born and raised in, and then he went on to move and, and do this stuff. And Rocky, of course, is one of those songs, one of the only songs I know by him, but it's one of those songs that is a tearjerker. And so it, it, I talked about that in a video a while back about the songs that, you know, that and Cats in the Cradle and, and Seasons in the Sun are all songs I grew up on in the 70s that are sad. And this was one of them. And I think it was the only song I really knew by him. But here it was. In the shrink wrap, it was broke open, but had the shrink wrap on it. I left it on there. Had the old price tag from way back in the day. Um, it's 1975, and the album, you know, was, I was like, wow, you don't find thrift store albums that look like that. So uh, I had to rescue it, and I'll give it a listen to see if I like the rest of his stuff. But, yeah, Rocky was a song that is the only one I remember by that, and so I went ahead and grabbed that. So it was a fun little weekend of local buys and a little bit from the thrift store and, uh, you know, just some fun stuff. So anyway, that's it for this one and a story. Hopefully you didn't think I was too boring with that. It was just, it was novel because of a recent comment on one of my videos about that. So interesting timing. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.